In this video, I want to give you some information on the center of gravity of objects and of torque. Now, center of gravity, which we abbreviate CG most of the time, that's where the center of mass. So a, a lot of times center of gravity and center of mass are used interchangeably. Uh, it's not always the same, but for what we're doing, we're going to consider them to be the same thing. So if you take an object, let's say we have a ball, and the center of gravity is going to be right in the very center of that ball. That's also its center of a mass. So what if I have a cup? So let's, let's put a cup here, and let's give it a round top and a handle. Well, the cup is hollow, but the, the center of mass or the center of gravity is going to be somewhere inside that cup, so it's not in the mass itself. It would be like if you had a donut. If I had a donut, and then you have the hole of the donut, the center of mass or the center of gravity is going to be in that hole. So that, that's what we're talking about. But in our lab and in what we're doing here, let's say we have a meter stick. So let's, let's just put some marks here on my meter stick. Let's say, let's just go away across. If I were to balance my meter stick, where could I balance it? Well, it would balance somewhere in the middle of the stick which means if I were to hold it right here, it would balance. And so it wouldn't rotate one way or the other. So I could balance the weight of that meter stick on my finger. That is known as the center of gravity of that meter stick. So let's, let's just put the center of gravity. And so let's say that's at the, at the 50 centimeter mark. We're going to put it right in the very middle. That means the weight of the meter stick is going straight up. So all of the weight, so if I take all the weight of the meter stick, all of these little arrows are going to equal the one arrow that's going opposite because it's balanced. So now I can do my rotational. If this end here were to move, it would rotate this way. If this end over here were to move, it would rotate this way. This side over here, this is known as clockwise rotation. And this over here is known as counterclockwise. Now by convention, clockwise rotation is in the negative direction and counterclockwise is in the positive direction. And in our math, it all balances out one way or the other, but this is by convention. And if you remember on our circle that we had with the radians and the degrees, the, the, the circle rotated in the counterclockwise direction, so that's why we use these conventions. So if it's going to rotate clockwise, that's going to be negative, and if it's going to rotate counterclockwise, we're going to call that positive. So now that leads us to torque. And so what is torque? Torque is our turning force. If I have any force, that's an R. If I have any force that causes a rotation, that is a turning force. And so if I have, if I open a door, if I unscrew a lid, if I turn a screwdriver, it doesn't make any difference what that is. If I'm creating rotation, that is torque. Now torque, we use the symbol for torque, and our formula is force times distance. And our force is always perpendicular. I'll just give you an example in just a second. It is always perpendicular. And the distance is what we call a lever arm. So let's go here and let me, let me put in uh, an object. Let me actually make it where we can see it. There we go. So now we have an object, and I'm going to pivot it right here in the center. So I'm going to put what we call a fulcrum, which is my pivot point, or my fulcrum. And let's say I push down right here and that's going to cause clockwise rotation, but I push down right here. Well, first of all, the force must be perpendicular. If I were to come in at an angle, I would have to have the vertical component of this 
in order for it to be the force that I want. And then my lever arm is the distance from the pivot point to where I apply the force. That is going to be my distance. You always measure from the pivot point. Never measure just the length of the stick or anything. This is your center that you're going to be using as far as what you're going to be measuring with. Let me get rid of that line. So my distance is always from the pivot point to the fulcrum so that when I go here and I say what is my lever arm, that is the distance from the fulcrum to the force. And remember the force must be perpendicular to the rotation that you cause. And so what do I have? Just like we had with, with this, I have clockwise and counterclockwise. Here, my counterclockwise torque is going to equal my clockwise torque. And so my torque counterclockwise is going to be equal to my torque clockwise. And then you can see right here the breakdown of that. If torque is equal to force times distance, then the two are going to be equal to each other. And that's going to give me balanced torque. So I know that my equilibrium is going to be zero. So let's look at a, a sample as to what this would mean. Let's say I have a meter stick, so it's one meter in length, this way, one meter in length, and I, the center of gravity is at the 50 centimeter mark, so 0 0.5 meters is going to be right there. And let's say at the 70 centimeter mark, so let's put that right about here, and so let's say that's 0 0.7 meters. I apply a force of two newtons. And in that two newtons, what is my torque? Well, my torque here is going to be two, because that's my force, let's say it's perpendicular. My, I put it at 0.7, but it's from the pivot point. So my distance from the pivot point is going to be 0 0.2. So my torque in my clockwise direction is going to be 0 0.4 Newton meters. I should have told you that sooner. My, my unit for force, or for my uh, torque, is the Newton meter. Let's put that here. And, we, and that is Newton meter. So down here, I have to, my torque in the clockwise direction is 0.4 Newton meters. So now on this side, I need about, if I'm going to balance this, I need a torque of 0.4 Newton meters. So let's say I'm instead of at point, or instead of, let's say I put this at the 0.1 meter mark. So how much force is going to be required to balance this? So here's what I'm going to do. I've got this distance here, and I already know this distance. This is 0 0.2, and I know this force. So how much force is going to be required in the counterclockwise direction to balance this out? Well, if you remember, and let me, let's get rid of that. My torque counterclockwise is equal to my torque clockwise. And what we just did, we know what my torque clockwise. Uh, that is 2, which is my force, times my distance, which is 2 times 0.2. My counterclockwise, if I want to know what force is present here, then I'm going to do my counterclockwise. Well, I know this distance. This distance is 0 0.4 meters. So that's 0 0.4, and I'm trying to find the force there. So my force right here is one Newton. So this would be one Newton, which makes sense because if this is only 0.2 meters, this is 0.4 meters, then this is going to be half the force. Here I have a water faucet that's turned on with, with a force of two Newtons. So I have a force of two Newtons. And it's exerted on a handle at a distance of 0 0.06 from the pivot point. So that's going to be my distance of my lever arm. So my distance is 0 0.06 
meters. How much torque must be produced? So my torque is force times distance. And so my torque is 2 times 0 0.06. So that's going to be 0 0.12 Newton meters. And that's how much torque I would produce. And there was the answer. All right, so now I've got a, a girl that's building a mobile to hang over a baby's crib. She hangs a 0.2 kilogram toy sailboat that's 0.1 meters from the left end. And then I've got a 0.015 kilogram toy that's 0.2 meters from the right end. And my bar or my lever is 0 0.5 meters long. Uh, long. If the level, if the lever arm or my bar has a negligible mass, which means I'm not including it in my calculation, where do I put the support string so that the arm balances? So let's, let's just draw my drawing. See if I can draw. That's eh, not too bad. So the whole thing is 0 0.5 meters long from there to there. And I'm going to hang at 0.01 from the left end. So here's my left end. So let's say this is 0.01 meters. From that end, I'm going to hang a, a 0.02 kilogram mass, which if I convert that to meters, that's 0 0.196 newtons. Now, excuse me, if I convert it to newtons, that's 0 0.196 newtons. So hanging 0.01 from the end. And now I'm going to hang a 0 0.015 kilogram toy, 0.2 from the right end of the bar. So if I come in from the from the right end, 0 0.02, and let's say I hang it right here, well, I'm going to measure from the same place that I did for the other one. So this is actually going to be my point of 0 0.3 meters. And that, if I multiply that, times gravity, that's 0 0.147 newtons. So I've got two going down. Now what I want to know is where am I going to place the string? Where, where will it be? In here. So I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be somewhere in here, but what distance is that? So I'm going to set my equation. The mass of I have the mass of this object hanging down, and I have the mass of this object hanging down. So that is how much this is holding up. So I'm going to add those two together, and that is 0 0.343 d, and that's what I want to find. I want to find out what that is. And so that is equal to the other side, or the, the other, and that's 0 0.196 times 0.01. And I'm going to add to that, because both of these are going this way, I'm going to add to that 0 0.147 times 0 0.3. And if I do that math, just do that whole math, then my distance is 0 0.13 meters. And that's where I would put my string in order to balance this out. So when you put your torques in, uh, remember what we did up, up here. Let me find it. What we did up, up here is that these balance out. These are going to balance out. So it's all equal to each other. So in calculating your torque, this is what we would do.